All right, guys, so in this video, I wanna go over what is really kind of the last big step in renovating the shop space itself, and that was installing this drop ceiling. And I'm gonna go over all of the materials, all of the tools I used, as well as the process of installing the ceiling itself. So what you guys see here in front of me are the kind of main components of the drop ceiling grid system themselves. And so you've got a few different components that kind of make up the system. The first thing you install is this wall molding. This is basically like just a little piece of angled metal. This goes around the entire perimeter of the room where you'll be installing the ceiling. The next major component is your main beam, and this is a cutoff section. These come in 12 foot sections, at least the ones I got did. These are gonna be hooked to the ceiling with this hanging wire, and then they are gonna be attached. The wire itself is gonna be attached to these lag screws. Essentially, this is providing all of the structural support. These are super strong, very beefy, and these run at four foot on center increments, you'll click your cross tees into this. So speaking of cross tees, they are the next part of the system. These go between your main beam pieces. And as you can see, the main beam has a whole bunch of these little slots and the cross tees snap right into those slots. And that's how the whole system is connected. All right, so next let's talk about some of the tools you'll probably want to have on hand when installing a drop ceiling. So first and foremost, and I think a tool that it would really be next to impossible to install one of these ceilings without is a good laser line level. And so this particular one comes with this adjustable base, but the real kind of kicker for this one is it has this little built-in clip functionality here on this base that clips to the wall molding piece on a drop ceiling like this. So once you get the wall molding installed, you just clip this base on, you can set your laser to whatever height you want in the rest of your ceiling grid. This particular laser also came with this reader, which was incredibly handy. This thing has a magnetic base, so we could stick it to our main beam pieces. Even if you have a less expensive laser, you can buy these laser readers aftermarket. They're like five or 10 bucks on Amazon. For this kind of project, they are super, super handy. Another tool that's used a lot on a drop ceiling installation is a good pair of snips. And you'll be using this to cut wall molding to length, to cut it so you can bend it around corners, to cut your main beam to length, to cut your cross tees to length. It will be used a ton. And another kind of more specialized drop ceiling tool is this metal punch. These can punch holes in all of the various metal components. So we would use it to pre-punch the holes in the wall molding. And then one other hand tool you'll use a lot is a good set of lineman's pliers. These are great for obviously cutting stuff, but they're also great for bending that wire and in my case since this is a commercial setting I'd use a much beefier wire and that stuff was really tough to bend the last thing I'd recommend would be this specialized bit for driving in these lag screws and this is what the hanging wire attaches to this bit is custom designed to fit these things and makes driving them a total breeze and it can be pretty tough we definitely broke a few of these lag screws so I would definitely buy at least one if not a backup one of these bits because you'd be kind of dead in the water if and when the head of the lag screw breaks off in the bit which we had happen all right so I think that covers the materials and tools you'll need so let's go ahead and dive into the installation process so we decided to start the install process here in kind of the center section of the shop and mainly that was because there was the least amount of stuff in the way and by we I mean me and the guys from the Perkins Builder Brothers who were awesome enough to help out on this project because really it would have been next to impossible to do this by myself. But anyway the first thing we had to do in this particular space was figure out how we were going to get this wall molding attached to these big links of steel I-beam that are running through the shop. And so I had thought of a few options but I ended up landing on basically just sandwiching two by eights on either side of these steel beam since we'd be needing to install the drop ceiling on both sides and this ended up working really well. I set up a line laser about two inches above where the drop ceiling would end up being and we used that to set the height of the 2x8s. To attach the boards we would just drill holes through these steel beams or use some of the existing holes which were definitely very handy and then just run a little over a three inch long GRK structural screw through to basically suck the two boards to each other sandwiching the steel I-beam. And we also added some Lexel just for a little bit extra grab. And this really helped to kind of hold things in place while we were adding all of the clamps and getting the boards set in place. And this was definitely some awkward work and it was pretty slow going to start. Pretty easy. Huh? <laughs> Is that pretty easy? It's almost like I drill through the wood and then there's metal right behind yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, like half an inch of steel. steel. <laughs> I hope you're still rolling. I am. Good. This is going to be a good little time lapse. I hope you're playing this real speed so people can see like one hole. This is one hole. Yeah. Oh. Through. One minute, 20 seconds. Wow. 
I felt like that was pretty good too. All right, now this is the satisfying part. Now you can girk it. GRK, screw into the board on the other side. Oh. <laughs> I could just keep driving it through, but that's probably yeah, no, good. probably not. So you got money to pay us for like a week? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. We're getting her done. <laughs> My AdSense for this video is going to y'all. While we're working, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Husk Knives. So welcome to our kitchen. I do a heck of a lot of cooking in here for our family of four. I do all of the weekly meal prep. And so that means lots of chopping vegetables, slicing up meat. And so I've been putting this Husk Knife to the test over the last couple of weeks. And I gotta say, I really like using it. Husk knives are made from high quality Japanese stainless steel and they're extremely sharp, which makes them a lot safer and easier to use. This knife features a high quality oak handle, which feels great to use, and the knife is really well balanced, making it a lot more comfortable in my hand. If you do a lot of cooking like I do, I definitely recommend picking up one of these knives because a great knife can really improve your daily meal prep. So right now, Husk is running a 70% discount on their Japanese-inspired knives for my viewers, and so you can test drive a Husk knife of your own with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're interested, check it out by clicking the link in my video description below. Big thanks again to Husk Knives for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to work. Eventually, we got into a pretty good groove and finally got all of the boards installed so I could drop the height of the laser to about eight inches below the floor joists above, and that would be the final height of the drop ceiling. So the first thing to install for the drop ceiling was the wall molding, and we attached this to those two by eights with some inch and a quarter screws. And it was really simple to install since we could just line up the bottom edge of the wall molding with that laser line. Also, as I mentioned, we went ahead and pre-punched some holes in the wall molding pieces, which made getting the screws started easier. And when we needed to start a new piece of wall molding, we would either just butt it up to the last piece or overlap it by about an inch. And both of those seemed to work and look fine in the final installation. On the inside corners, we would cut and then just make a fold so it could continue wrapping around the corner and this seemed to look really nice. And thankfully in this first section, we didn't have any outside corners, but I will show that a little later. We did, however, have this super funky kind of curved wall and we were kind of scratching our heads as to how we would install the wall molding around it. But then we kind of came up with the idea to cut it, to basically kerf cut it like you would do for kerf bending wood. And we made a cut every six inches and that ended up being able to follow that curve very, very easily. And once that curve section was done, the wall molding was done, at least in this first section. So next we could start installing our main beams and this is also where we needed to decide on our layout. So your main beams are gonna run perpendicular to your floor joists and they're gonna be spaced four feet on center. And so the biggest consideration layout wise for the main beams is whether you're gonna be centered on a grid piece on a main beam or centered on a tile. And I use SketchUp to help me with my layout, but it's really pretty simple. You can measure the width of your space, divide it by four feet and figure out how you wanna center things. And you basically just don't wanna end up with a bunch of tiny slivers on either edge because it just isn't gonna look quite as good. Once we had that figured out, we went ahead and set up a string line at our center mark and we could reference off of that string line to set our lag screws. And again, these need to be added about every four feet and they'll be screwed directly into the floor joists above. Check, we got some dust. Once the lag screws were installed, we could go ahead and start hanging the main beam. And this first main beam piece will need to be cut to length. And this will also dictate your layout, I guess lengthwise, it depends on which way you're looking at your room. But once again, we ended up centering our grid across that distance. And so we just cut our main beam so that one of the slots for the cross tees would end up centered in the space. And then we could go ahead and get to work installing. To hang the main beam, use that hanger wire. And so we went ahead and pre-cut and bent some sections to hang from the lag screws. So it was already in location when we went to hang the main beam. We would set the laser line two inches below where we wanted the kind of final height of the ceiling. And once it was lined up with that two inch number, we could bend the hanger wire to match, run it through one of the holes in the main beam, and then twist it three or four times and it was set in place. We went ahead and added the hanger wire to the first section of main beam and then continued on with the next section, flipping it together with the previous section. Oh! And it was really just rinse and repeat down to the other end of the room from there. And we went ahead and did two rows of main beam and got those wrapped up and then we could start installing some cross tees to double check that everything was looking right. These cross tees clip into the slots in the main beam and since I'm using two by four tiles, I only needed to space them every two feet with no extra cross tees to make it a two by two spacing. 
And once we had the cross tees installed, I could go ahead and drop a few of the ceiling tiles in just to see how it was gonna look. And I use these Yuma white tiles from Armstrong Ceilings, and I think they look a heck of a lot better than your kind of standard drop ceiling tile with all of those holes in them. These are nice clean white, and they seem to be made of some sort of mineral fiber material. And I think that's why these panels have such a good noise reduction quality to them. So from there, we could just continue on installing more rows of main beams, and we were really starting to get the hang of it at this point. Is this laser beam getting you right in the eyeballs like it is me? No, I'm too short. Oh. <laughs> there are some perks to being short. Oh, yeah. Laser beam right over my head. No worries. <laughs> hey, did you put some music in on that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the next row of main beam, which we had kind of been avoiding, landed on the curved section of the wall. And we actually used another line laser to help us figure out where that main beam needed to intersect. We're using this portable laser to shoot a line way down there to this curved wall so that we can mark our four foot increments because he can't like measure around the wall four feet from our tracks here, right? We have to kind of be in line with the four foot mark because if you're on an angle over here, the way it skews over, it doesn't give you a true read. Yeah. All right, I'm at 51. So you need, uh, to your right, right. Too, too much. Come back. Quarter, quarter. Keep coming. It's like moving back somehow. Too far. Pull. Right there. Now we can just put a screw in the wall there to pull our string line back. And we should be four feet off this other track. We did our maths right. Oh! <laughs> Industrial athlete. Industrial athlete, my I've done a drop ceiling one time before, it was about 15 years ago. And at that point, I did not have a laser like we're using here to give us this perfect flat, just reference anywhere. These lasers are the most important tools we have out here today. They're making this whole thing possible because nothing else in this building is really level at all. Everything's up and down like inches. I just want to point out the lasers are making it way easier. If you're gonna do this, laser it. So we got all of the rows of main beams installed here in the center section of the shop. And then we could start adding the cross tees around the border. And those obviously all needed to be cut to length. And these cross tees can be cut with aviation snips or tin snips. But since I have a metal chop saw, we decided to use that. And that definitely made really quick work of cutting these pieces to length. And it was also getting towards the end of day two at this point, And things were definitely starting to get a little silly. So overall, things were really starting to look good at this point, really starting to take shape, except for this one spot. I mean, do we want to talk about the elephant in the room? Yeah. I mean, I mean, how, how did I miss that? Seriously. Maybe he wants to put a light in the room. <laughs> okay. So speaking of the lights, now that the grid was in in this intersection, we could also go ahead and start dropping in some of the LED troffer lights. So I use these PLT Solutions LED troffer fixtures from 1000bulbs.com, and I'll show how to wire these later on. But before dropping the troffers into the ceiling grid, I also went ahead and laid out the lights in SketchUp just so we could get these set in place for the time being. So with that, this center section was done for now. So we shuffled everything out of the way so that we could get started on the right section. So as it turned out, there was not enough clearance above my new garage doors, which again, I'm gonna cover in a future video to have a drop ceiling above them. So we needed to figure out a way to stop the drop ceiling before it got to the garage. And we decided to keep it simple here and just used a two by 10 for the vertical section and attach that to a two by four, just to give us a little adjustability for attaching it to the floor joists above. We used the three, four, five method to square the pieces off of the walls. And once the second section was installed, we could go ahead and start installing the wall molding in this area. And this was mostly just more of the same, although we did need to go ahead and cut away some of that inside corner trim from when we installed the plywood walls. And we ran this long on purpose so that we could get it nice and tight to the finished drop ceiling. From there, we continued around the right section and there were lots of corners to deal with, including some outside corners. And so there are a few ways to deal with outside corners. You can just cut and bend the piece and you'll end up with a bit of a gap there, but honestly, in a shop environment like this, I don't know that it matters a whole lot. You can also overlap two pieces and get yourself kind of a mitered looking corner. But in our case, since that outside corner trim was gonna cover the cuts here, we just went ahead and cut and bent the pieces. 
Once the wall molding was in, we could go ahead and start installing the main beams. And obviously I needed to figure out the layout. And I knew I wanted a row of lights along this wall here outside the CNC room. So I kind of based my layout around that and that ended up working out really well. We also got my dust collector hung up while we were at it, but I'll cover all of that in my dust collection video in the future. Once the main beams were finished, we could go ahead and start installing those border cross tees. And I also started cutting and fitting some of the border tiles as well. And these tiles are super easy to cut. I used a drywall square and a utility knife. And the one thing to watch out for, especially with this particular type of ceiling tile is they are a magnet for dirty fingerprints. So I made sure to wash my hands regularly while installing these things. The first couple tiles we installed with our work gloves on prior to knowing this, and I'm definitely gonna have to go back and replace those because they look pretty bad. We also went ahead and filled in that section of tiles above the pallet rack, which was pretty tricky with the pallet rack in the way, but Eric monkeyed around up there and we got it knocked out. And finally, we dropped in the troffer lights in this section to wrap up day three with the Perkins guys. We started on the left section of the shop on day four, and once again, we needed to add more boards to these walls, or at least we decided to because it made it easier since we were dealing with some concrete block walls in this area. We also spanned across the opening in the drywall above the panel to leave me kind of an access point if I wanna add more wiring in the future. We got the left section installed super quick and then we could move into the CNC room and we started in there by moving the CNC out of the way and I am really glad I made the door opening there big enough for us to be able to do this because it made the installation process really simple. This was a very small room. We only ended up having two rows of main beams in that room. And that was where I called it with the Perkins guys. They had to move on to their next project. And so now it was my turn to go ahead and wire up all of these troffer lights. And I decided to rent a scissor lift to help with this wiring and it definitely made things a lot simpler. Not to mention that thing was pretty fun to drive around the shop. So I wired these lights in three different sections, the left, right, and center sections of the shop, and I daisy chained the lights together in each section so that I could run them each off of one circuit. The one downside with this lift is that it was too heavy to go up on my kind of wooden platform here, so I had to switch back to regular scaffolding there. But once I got that section wired up, I could get the MC cable fastened all the way back to the panel, and I added a Lutron smart switch in line there so I could control the lights remotely. And with all that done, I could finally test the lights out. All right, time for the moment of truth. Yes, they're all on. I think they look great. Very even lighting. Oh, what a relief. That's super exciting. The only bummer is now I've got to do that whole thing again, two more times to get the rest of the lights wired. With the lights wired up in this section, we could go ahead and fill in all of the tiles now. And thankfully my dad had some time to help me out. And big thanks to my dad for all this help. It was a lot of work cutting and fitting all of these border tiles. And some of them were pretty tricky, but he's a super detail oriented guy. And I think the ceiling is looking really good now that most of the tiles are in. Yeah, that was great. How about that? While I continued doing more electrical work, my dad kept chugging along with the tiles and he went ahead and knocked out the CNC room as well as this section over my workbench. And it was really nice to slowly be working through these three giant pallets of drop ceiling tiles that have been here in the shop probably for close to a year at this point. I'd also just received a big delivery of all of the drop ceiling tiles and ceiling grid from Armstrong Ceilings, which I had to hand unload into the shop. So the drop ceiling obviously isn't 100% done at this point, but I think that's where I'm gonna call the video anyway, just so I can go ahead and get this out there. I think I've covered all of the information you'd need to install a drop ceiling yourself, and I'm just amazed at how much better the shop looks now that this drop ceiling is in. So as I mentioned, this was one of the last really big projects to get the shop area itself done. In the next video in the series, I'm gonna cover getting those garage doors installed, doing some painting, and kind of buttoning up the last things. And then I can start getting my tool set up, getting the dust collection setup and doing some shop projects to really make this place my own. So if you guys don't want to miss those videos, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell. Also, I have links to all the tools and materials I used, including those Armstrong ceilings grid system and the ceiling tiles themselves, as well as those LED troffer lights from thousandbulbs.com. I have all that linked in the video description below. And last, if you want to support me, I sell merch. I have plans available for a lot of my woodworking projects and I have both YouTube members and Patreon set up. So go check one of those out. All right. Thanks for watching y'all and until next week, happy building.